Hello guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Chris and this is my Lord of the Rings hobby. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to paint the Warriors of the Dead according to Games Workshop website and also their app. Uh, the app has actually been recently been updated, I just don't think it does a very good job explaining and showing you exactly what you need to paint. So a lot of my paintings will be as we call a uh, box ready box ready I think the term is or whatever it's just very standard but also very close to what I would say the films are uh, as you can see there I've just shown you the warrior of the dead and also the king and the two heralds which I will be doing uh, later on in this week which I will do next for my next video so that should hopefully fingers crossed be up next Monday around six o'clock UK time I'm only going to use the one model to reference which is going to be this one now uh, so by all means just whatever model you're using just go along and follow the roughly the outlining I've also got some small little skulls here which you might not be able to see as clear as you need to uh, these are going to be used for the basing um, this whole tutorial is going to go from the model all the way to uh, painting the base and getting it actually tabletop ready if not composition ready uh, so yeah these are the scores they're really good i've got these off ebay i will leave a link in the description for these just so you know uh so to start this off what i did is i got rid of all the mode lines of course i've skipped that bit out because there's hundreds of videos to show you how to do it and then what i also did then is used a gray sear or a gray light gray spray paint on the models and then i just did a full plain white on the skulls uh, what I do like about this is this especially these models is that you literally need your free brushes which you can see now uh, you can get a dry brush a basing brush and also a shade brush this is the basic one I'm using the acrylic ones I believe it is I can't remember what the, the artificial ones sorry uh, for the uh, base just because it was slightly cheaper the dry brush a large one and then a shade medium uh, doesn't matter which ones you use as long as you use something along those lines first color we're going to use is lead belcher so that's just going to go in all the metallic so you're looking at your chain mail your sword and it's up to you if you want to do any of the other bits around the model uh, this is me just showing you off the metal bits what we've done so it's nice and easy just checking that you can do if you want to like I said the outlines of the helmets if you want to add a bit more metal on there just to get uh, a bit of a different one but we're just going for the general stuff what you can see which is the chainmail and the sword and once you've done all that I missed a bit on this model that's why I just quickly went back over it once you've done all right we're ready for step two just double checking the model here just to make sure we got it all done now the next color as you can see now is a celestial grey that's a base colour so what we want to do is make sure we shake the pot and also we will add water to the paint once it's on the palette uh, so this one here as I was pointing out there does the whole of the model except for the metal bit so avoid trying to do your sword and your chain mail and whatever little metal details you put on there but this is going to go on all over the robes the face the hat the skin if you get what I mean anything like that what you would normally separate on normal models we're just going to absolutely cover this nice layer it's up to you you can possibly get away with using two thin layers uh, I think I did these all in one because oh, I wasn't that bothered by a bit of the grey showing on the uh, on the model and especially because we're going to use a big wash to go over it which I'll explain later on but yeah make sure again we're getting it we're getting onto the hilt of the sword uh, not the hilt the covering of the sword I forgot what that word is uh, yeah and as you can see we're going all over that and make sure that's fully done there we go so that's it done as you can see there's a big contrast of what the grey look like and this nice uh, as I call it bluey grey or greeny grey I guess uh, if you do go over your metal bits don't worry just slowly touch them up I normally do it throughout as I am painting uh, and I just give everything a nice little tidy up when I need to these models to be fair don't need it because of the sort of uh the style they are and the amount of wash you're going to dip on this in a second anyway it doesn't matter so now we're happy with that we're going to look at getting the next one which is our shades so we're going to use two shades on this model so the first one we're going to use is quelia 
green shade i have no idea if i'm saying that right so i do apologize i am dyslexic so a lot of these words and paints just don't make sense so if i am wrong i do apologize that's why i'll link them and uh, list them in the description and the next one after that is the bell tan that one we're going to use a lot for a lot over the model as we'll get into bigger details later so the first one like i said is the kalua kilua oh god see green shade that's going to go on all the metals so we're looking at your swords and your chain mail again any little bits here and there Once we're happy with that, this is me just trying to get it focused onto the finger to show you, but you can see where all that greeny, bluish green has gone onto the weapon. It actually looks really better uh, when you close up and see the model. Uh, so you could possibly get away with not doing it if you're into a batch and you only want to buy the one color, then by all means, I would personally just buy the Beltan one, the Beltan uh, green, and just cover the whole model in that, uh, especially for the highlights and everything what we're going to do. So now we're going to add this all over the rest of the model, trying to not get it onto the metal bits, what we've just done to show difference. But as you can see, we're just going to cape that in. Uh, I will zoom in a bit. I'll, bit. I'll try and focus the model in a second to show you. But yeah, we're going to run that all over the place. Once we're happy with the coverage, we're just going to double check the model, make sure we've got none of those just blue gray. We want it completely covered. Uh, it doesn't matter if it pulls too much. You want to, you can take off the excess. But I feel like on this model, uh, the more green, the better, especially for the next steps. You could actually, to be fair, just leave this model as it is now, do the basin and then put it on the tabletop because it does, it is basically battletop ready or tabletop ready as they call it. The next few steps after this are going to be us showing you the different techniques and how to just to bring um, the model a bit more to life. The next step is going to be Ulfren Grey, a layer. Oh, and this is going to be a dry brush, but it's going to be a heavy dry brush. And by that, I mean that we're really going to try and work this into as much of the grooves and bring out a lot of the highlight. We're not going to shove it all the way into the creases because that's what the whole point of that wash was. Uh, but we're just going to try and give it a really nice, heavier brush all over. Now, there's two little things you need to know before doing this, which I didn't know. I've only learned recently. One, don't put it onto tissue paper because the moisture of the paint and so forth goes away and two which is probably before number one to be fair is make sure your dry brush is wet not soaking wet just damp enough just then because it, it holds the color in adds the thing it's meant to be a lot better i don't know the full scientific reasons but i've been told that's the way forward so yeah we're just going to keep going over it if there is a bit where it's slightly heavy and you've done it you think oh you don't like that grab your thumb grab your foam just get your foam and just roll it over and it'll bring off a bit of that paint uh, so i do it on a quite a few of the models as i've been painting you see in the background i've got 30 of these to do but all i do is quickly use my foam and just like get rid of the excess or the top of it and then i'll have a reapply if i need to okay and the next last dry brush is the white scar and this is a very thin one and all we're going to do is literally just trace this across the top of the model across the eye but this goes side to side or up, up or down but we're not going to work this in as much we're not going to do a heavy dry brush and the reason for that is we want it to now just bring out the main top features so we're going to be very careful and like i said any mistakes use a piece of tissue or use your foam or whatever you got on hand and then just slowly uh, just rub it off because it does actually come off quite easily
Once we're happy with that, we're going to start our base. Uh, this is a very basic one for me. I just use sand, PVA glue mixed with water, uh, any acrylic paints, black and white, and then just apply that to the base and then let it dry for a while. And once we've done that, we will then look at doing the skulls. So we're going to use Zanary Dust there, quickly flash that up on the camera. I'm going to paint all the skulls. I'm going to make sure we get into the eye sockets, uh, make sure this is fully covered. Remember I used a base uh, spray of uh, white, I think it's just plain white from Halfords, uh, but any of the white or even grey sear will actually do. Uh, I just chose white because I ran out of grey sear. Once you've covered that, then we're going to let them dry and stick them onto the base with the Gorilla Super Glue. One small detail I forgot, uh, somehow edited out, is we use the Tiffin Sepia. Uh, shade and we do that all over the skulls make sure we get into like the creases and the cracks in the skull and so forth uh, so yeah just remember to do that and also use super glue because of the resin skulls the final step to this which is quite easy again is another dry brush I've changed the dry brush here I just use a smaller one but the bigger one will do uh, we're going to use your shanty bone and we're going to dry the brush that all across the skulls and just trying to pick out as many details as we can with it but very light not going to scrub in at all we're just going to quickly flick over it and then that should be us done and there we have it guys and here's some pictures of the models if you do like the video don't forget to hit like and subscribe and uh yeah thank you very much and i will see you next monday for the king of the dead bye for now guys